Welcome back, everybody, to the Tennessee Titans franchise here on Madden 23. Today is the series finale, the final episode of the series. We're going to wrap up the careers of all these great players. Romeo Colucci, Elijah Bryant, Scotty Piggins, Caleb Farley, Cardell Simpson. Everybody here will retire off, hopefully into the sunset, hopefully going to the Hall of Fame. We're going to get through as long as we need to today, however many seasons necessary to wrap things up. Before we get started, though, I do real quickly want to talk a little bit about Madden 24 because obviously the franchise series that we've got on that game will be starting within the next few days. This past Thursday, I released the team reveal and trailer for the series, which I originally had planned to start this upcoming Monday. However, it has recently come to my attention that the game is coming out at 8 p.m. on Monday and not at midnight. So because of that, the series will probably start on Tuesday instead. Although last year the game came out like hours early. So I don't know if the first episode will be Monday or Tuesday, but it's going to be really soon. So obviously, if you guys saw the team reveal, you know that I am doing an expansion team this year for Madden 24, and I think there are some concerns amongst people with the series, and I think a lot of those concerns are completely valid, because nobody's done a series like what I'm about to do on YouTube, so because of that, there isn't really a baseline for me to follow, so I get why people are a little bit concerned that I could very easily butcher this series, but I do real quickly want to explain some things just so you guys who are concerned about it can feel a little bit better. I'm aware that expansion is not an option in Madden. I know that. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually do an expansion draft and form a roster that way. I've been preparing for this series probably for about a month, even before I knew I was going to pick expansion, because I wanted to make sure that I had everything down to make sure that it could possibly work. And I have come to the conclusion that it can work, and thus I will be able to do it. I figured out the players who will be protected for every team. I think I figured out pretty much the entire roster for the team that we're going to have to start the series. So I think I've kind of got it all down pat. I'm obviously going to explain a lot more details in the first episode of the series, so you guys will be able to learn more. But just know I've got the whole thing under control, and I think a lot of the concerns that people have, while, again, they are pretty valid in my opinion, I think a lot of those concerns will be squashed after the first episode. We also still have to pick an actual team as well. I don't want to choose a team until I see all of the new relocation jerseys. So down below in the description, there is a Google form for you guys to vote on the city we pick and the team that we pick as well so if you've not voted on that i recommend you do just so i can see what teams that people would like to see me use the most so now with all of that out of the way we can go back to our focus here being the finale of the titan series i'm super excited about the expansion series for madden 24 but we've still got a few days until that comes out and right now we've got to finish things out here with our boys everybody within our core has gotten quite a bit older Romeo is 30, Elijah Bryant is 30, Piggins is 32, Simpson is 33, Caleb Farley is 34. These guys are getting a lot older, and it's not like some of the other finales where we go a lot of seasons before guys retire. I think a lot of it's going to be very quick today, and I think within five seasons, most of these core is going to be completely gone. A lot of guys have started to regress. Romeo Colucci, not so much. He's still a 99 overall in a lot of the archetypes. He will likely start to regress within the next couple of years, but for now, he is still on the top of his game. So basically, to explain where we are is we've obviously had the five full seasons of the actual series. We've gone through six seasons in the long-term sim, so we have made it through 11 total seasons in this franchise so far. Our Titans have become a dynasty over the last seven years. Obviously, won our first Super Bowl against Carolina. Then we ended up winning five of the next six Super Bowls, and we would have won the other one if not for a fluky Hail Mary at the end of the AFC Championship game. Our undefeated Super Bowl streak came to an end in the final season of the last episode as we lost the Giants 36-22, making our core 5-1 all-time in Super Bowls. Let's take a look at the retirements here in the 2032 offseason. There are some notable names here. Mika Fitzpatrick, DK Metcalf, Nate Davis, the longtime Tennessee Titan. I really wanted to have him retire here with the Titans, and he stayed here through his entire 14-year career up until the final season where we just did not have enough money to re-sign him. He ended up going to the Saints. He didn't have that great of the year. But he's been a really solid starter for us for almost a decade and a half at this point. Five-time Pro Bowler, legacy score over 11,000, and he's 
he's going to be one of the only guys from this core to have won five championships and to never lose one because he was not on the team that lost the Super Bowl. Another former Titan, Ed Oliver, retires. Ed Oliver's had an interesting journey on this channel. When I made the team reveal a couple days ago, obviously a lot of those clips were paying homage to a lot of the previous series I've done, and it came to my attention that we've gotten Ed Oliver a lot on this channel. Madden 19 with the Dolphins, Madden 20 with the Lions, and now Madden 23 here with the Titans. We had him for three seasons. He was especially great that last season before spending the last four seasons in Washington as a four-time Pro Bowler and a four-time Super Bowl champion as well. Other names here include Andrew Thomas, Jeffrey Simmons, the former Titan. I think that trade really worked out for both teams. Jeffrey Simmons was great with the Rams while we turned those picks into Asher Gonzalez and then helping us trade up for Romeo Colochi. If not for the Jeffrey Simmons trade, we probably would not have Romeo Colochi on our team. Buda Baker, Dak Prescott, retire. Rashawn Gary does as well. A lot of the drafted players from the very first season have retired. That's how far along we are. T. Higgins, Josh Jacobs, Trayvon Diggs, Christian Fulton have retired. Fulton has spent the last nine seasons with the Denver Broncos. Miles Garrett was in here, as is Deshaun Watson. Zach Wilson, DeAndre Swift, among some of the free agents who retire, and some coaches as well, Frank Reich and Riverboat Ron. So that'll bring us into the offseason, and we're kind of in a sticky position here because we really don't have any money. <laughs> we are basically in the negative in terms of cap space, and that's a problem because Amani Ward, Hot Rod Pryor, and Danny Dorsey are all free agents, and they're all asking for double-digit annual salaries, and obviously we cannot pay any of them because we are dirt broke. So basically, we're going to have to let these guys go into free agency and maybe try to sign them there. Our best bet is to trade away players who have no penalty. And those guys would include players like Richard Costanzo, Connor McCarthy, and Babatunde Mamadou. So if we want to bring these guys back, we may have to trade some of those players away, which may not even really be worth it. Let's take a look at the free agency class before figuring out what we're going to do. Notable names in here include Gunnar Wilson, Giacomo Vivaro, Kiki Rodriguez, there's Amani Ward, and Hot Rod Pryor, and Danny Dorsey. There aren't really many other free agents who entice me a whole lot. There's Justin Tucker now. He'll finally get an opportunity to start again after being replaced by Josh Allen in Las Vegas. But I do think it is worth it to bring back some of those guys and maybe trade away some of these players who are on big deals who don't take up a big cap penalty, and that includes Connor McCarthy. We're going to send him to the Jets for a first and a second in next year's draft to try to save money. And I think I'm going to trade away Babatunde Mamadou as well. I get this is a tough decision because he is a 99 overall, but he hasn't really truly played like a 99 overall. He's been good. He had that really good Super Bowl performance a couple years ago, but I think it would make sense to trade him with him being on the last year of his deal, and I'm really not looking to pay him. The offers in the trade finder are really good, unsurprisingly, for a 29-year-old player in the middle of his prime. So what we're going to get is a young pass rusher, Rashad Pleasant. He was a first-rounder last year with superstar development and two first-round picks in each of the next two seasons from the Los Angeles Chargers. So Babatunde Mamadou is now with the Chargers, and we get an intriguing young player who is cheap and can help our defense. So now we've got a little bit of money to work with, and we can maybe pay some of these guys. We've got around $20 million in cap space, which is probably enough to bring back one of these guys and then have a little extra flexibility. Between Ward, Dorsey, and Pryor, I think Hot Rod Pryor is going to be the guy I prioritize. I think we still really need him at the wide receiver position. I'm going to try to give Danny Dorsey a smaller offer as well. Hope we get lucky. And then Omani Ward, I think we're going to let go, which is unfortunate, but we don't really have a choice. Danny Dorsey would get a lot of interest within the next stage, so we're not going to be able to have enough money to bring him back, so we're going to up the offer on prior, and then we will also look to add Yusuf Oluwolu along with Ron McDevitt to replace Danny Dorsey on the defensive line, and they all end up accepting. So, a pretty successful free agency. We bring back Hot Rod Pryor. We do lose Danny Dorsey and Amani Ward. We also have some fifth-year option discussions here with Romeo Hannon, the young offensive tackle. I'm going to say no because I think an extension would actually be a lot cheaper than the annual value of the fifth-year option. Here's a look at the results of free agency. Kiki Rodriguez is in our division. He's a Jaguar. The Jags seem to go for new old running backs, and once one retires, they get a new one. Armani Ward signs a big deal with the Las Vegas Raiders, so he will be joining their secondary after seven seasons in Tennessee. Danny Dorsey stays in our division. He is a Colt. 
The other kind of notable signing is Justin Tucker, who I was excited would get another opportunity to start, ends up signing to be Justin Herbert's backup with the Chargers. I don't feel as bad for Justin Tucker anymore because he's doing it to himself. A few other former Titans in here, including the center, Carlisle Kaplan, and the corner, Josh Parks. Here's a look at the NFL draft for 2033. We had two first round picks in this draft, and I think we made out pretty well. We got two very talented players with Mark Russo and Landry Kennison, both of whom have hidden development. John Clemens also has a hidden development trade as well, along with our final pick, Corey Rutland, who's only in the mid 50s. But hey, hidden dev is hidden dev. You'll take what you can get. So that'll bring us into the first season of the day, the 12th season overall, and the 7th season of a long-term sim. We were able to bring back Pot Rod Pryor onto the receiving core, but we did lose some notable starters defensively with Danny Dorsey and Imani Ward. We're going to hope that Quincy Bishop and Hassan Drame will be able to replace their production. But for the most part, we have a very similar team to what we've had, and I think we did about the best that we could. We are 3-3 three and three here at the midseason mark. We're third in the division. Not all that great. We have a lot of money again, which is nice having that flexibility back. Now, we do have a lot of guys to pay, though. That's why we've got all this money. So, it's going to run out quick. We'll start with Cardell Simpson. He's 33 years old. We're going to give him a one-year extension. The tight end, Richard Costanzo. I do think it would be in our best interest to keep him long-term. He signs for five years. Caleb Farley's 34. I don't know how much longer he's left in the tank, but if he does, he'll be back for another year. Tavares Booker along the offensive line ended up saying no to a two-year, very player-friendly deal. I don't want to give him a super long deal in terms of years. Romeo Hannon, as I expected, is super cheap, so we're going to get him for seven years, which in my opinion is a total bargain for $28 million a season. Quinn Crew is back for three years, so the trio of him, Pryor, and Scotty Piggins stays together. Hassan Drame signs an extension. We're also looking to give Cordell Drake a long deal, and he says yes as well. So we're able to bring back pretty much everybody other than Booker, and we still have $28 million. We have plenty of flexibility for this upcoming offseason, which is really nice. We would end up going 10-7, and 7, good enough to win the division, and grab the third seed in the AFC. We'll be facing off against the New England Patriots in the wild card round, but before then, we'll take a look at numbers for the year. Romeo Colocci was fine. The interception certainly lower than last year, which is a big deal. Elijah Bryant, Scotty Piggins, both very good as usual in their 10th and 11th seasons, respectively. Scotty Piggins, I want to talk about him real quick because through 11 seasons, he has gotten over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns every single season. That is insane. If he plays long enough, he could be looking at some real records, particularly the receiving touchdown record. He's at 145 on his career. In terms of active leaders in yards and catches, he's really high, but touchdowns specifically, he is in fourth, only behind Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddell, and Amon Ross St. Brown. And I think those guys are all going to retire before him. So we could very well be looking at some real records for Scotty Piggins, again, if he chooses to stick around for a while, which who knows. Defensively, we were led by the pass rush, particularly the new guy, Rashad Pleasant. He had 10 sacks in his second season, while Francis Boa Kamoa had 12. And then Lamar Cloud with five interceptions, great to see. As we take a look at some of the leaders around the rest of the league, the thing that really stood out was Michael Lindholm, the quarterback out of Harvard with the Houston Texans. He's probably going to end up winning the MVP. It feels weird seeing the Texans like consistently good over the last five years because during the actual series, it felt like they won maybe a total of five games. A lot of 1,000-yard receivers this year. Holy smokes, there's so many of them, including, of course, our very own Scotty Piggins, who had another very strong season, as we know. And then defensively, Chase Young, 25 sacks. But the thing that really caught my eye, Amani Ward had nine interceptions. I don't know if I've seen a season where a player in the sim gets nine interceptions during this series. Amani Ward, in seven seasons here, had five interceptions total and never had a season with more than one. Yet this year, he had nine we had Mark Russo, our top draft pick, win the Defensive Rookie of the Year, which means he'll go up in dev. That's nice. And we have another one last hurrah storyline. Unsurprisingly, it is Caleb Farley, who is 34 years old. He's the final member of the original day one roster. Everybody else is retired. We were able to keep a number of guys like Derrick Henry, Harold Landry, Kevin Byard, etc. through the entire duration of the series, but those guys have gotten old and retired. Caleb Farley is the last one standing here at 34 years old, and we're hoping to have him ride into the sunset with another championship. 
We are going to simulate straight through our playoff games just to move faster as we beat New England in the wild card round. That's a good start. The only games I plan on simcasting are going to be Super Bowls, and if they're close, I'm going to hop in. In the divisional round against the Dolphins, we will get the win. We are back in the AFC Championship for the ninth consecutive season, and we've got the 9-8 and eight Cleveland Browns awaiting us here. They are the only team standing in front of us and a Super Bowl. So hopefully we can get Caleb Farley that final ring before he ultimately, likely, calls it a career. While in the NFC, we've got two teams we've already played against in Super Bowls. The Panthers, who we beat in our first Super Bowl. And then the Giants, the team who, of course, we lost to in the Super Bowl this past season. I would love to rematch them. And sure enough, I would end up getting my wish. The Titans will get another crack at the New York football Giants in the Super Bowl. We won 42-24 against Cleveland in the AFC Championship. Romeo Colucci played quite well while Corey Saxton got sacked five times by the pass rush. Elijah Bryant was good. Nobody really stood out in the pass rush. Nobody had more than one sack, but everybody produced. Caleb Farley as well with an interception in his final home game as a Titan. And now he gets ready for his final game overall, the Super Bowl against the Giants. We would love to have him retire into the sunset. Every time we've had a one last hurrah storyline within the long-term sim, that player has gone on to win a Super Bowl before retiring. So hopefully we can keep it going with Caleb Farley. Get him the ring. Let him go into Canton with six Super Bowl championships. Here's a look at the Pro Bowl roster as we get prepared for another Super Bowl. We're 5-1 all-time in Super Bowls, now facing off against the New York Giants. The first team who we will play multiple times in the Super Bowl, and obviously the Giants are the one team who has beaten us so far in the Super Bowl, and that was just last season. Their roster is very similar to what they had a season ago. They pretty much ran it back with their core. They still have the same starting quarterback, Denton Mahone, who won the Super Bowl MVP last year. He's a young guy who is looking to potentially lead the newest NFL dynasty as the Giants look to potentially dethrone our Tennessee Titans. They've still got some other star players. Gilbert Smith, the pass rusher out of Oklahoma in particular, is going to Canton once he retires, along with a number of other guys on this roster. Of course, it's the final NFL game, speaking of Canton, for cornerback Caleb Farley, who's had a legendary 14-season NFL career, and it will likely come to a close today here in the Super Bowl. And this game is especially interesting, being that it is against the New York Giants, because every single team we have lost a playoff game to in this series, we have ended up beating that team a year or two later in the postseason. We seem to find a way of getting an opportunity to get revenge against teams that we've lost to, and we always beat them the second time around. Can we get the same luck here with the New York Giants, the only team who has beaten us so far in a Super Bowl, and get ring number six for Romeo Colucci and the boys? Can we send off Caleb Farley with another championship? It feels like it's destined in the stars for us to win another one with the amount of luck that we have had with getting retired players championships along with being able to beat teams after losing to them in the playoffs. And it looks like this game is off to a pretty close start. The offense is producing. We are up by 14 points. Life is good. The Giants would respond and they would respond quick. They have now scored 20 unanswered. They would add some more, and then we would score a quick touchdown going into the fourth. And with that, we're going to simulate a little bit slower. We've got the ball looking to take the lead, and it does not look like we're going to find the end zone. We do take the points, though, so we're only down by two. Defense has got to clutch up here and get a stop, or else we could be in some trouble. The Giants have brought it all the way into the red zone. Can the defense stop them? They don't. The New York Giants... Take the lead, 40-31, to 31, with a little over two minutes to go. So we're going to hop in. It's not looking good for us. We need a whole lot to go right here over these last two minutes, or else the Giants are going to spoil the storybook ending. Scotty Pickens brings it to the 41. That'll bring it to the two-minute warning. The Titans still have all three timeouts in their back pocket. Here's Kolochi. Takes a shot downfield for Scotty Pickens again. Tennessee's got to move quick, though. They've got to move to the line of scrimmage super fast. Second and 10. Romeo heaves it up for the end zone. It's hauled in by Quinn Crew for the touchdown, and the lead will be within two. There's one problem, though. This play is coming back. It's a holding call against the left tackle, Elton George. And with that, 
not only does the touchdown not count, but the Titans have to move back 10 yards. Colocci on second and 20 is going to heave it deep again for Crew, who comes down with it again. Quinn Crew gets his line touchdown after all, and this game is back again within two. 40-38. to 38. Now we've got to try for the onside kick. Jeffrey Walker's kick was a little bit too good. It rolls out of bounds, and so the New York Giants will get the ball. So now we've got to get a stop. We do have all three timeouts, though, in our back pocket. First and ten, hand off to the right side. That's not a good start. It's a gain of eight. Titans call their first timeout. Another first down for the Giants. Would end it. Second and three now. Mahone hands it off up the middle, and he does not get it. Good tackle there by the defense. I think that was Athanase Gothero who led the way. Third and two, game of the line. Short pass is caught for a first down by the tight end, Gunnar Wilson. And that is how this game is going to come to an end. The New York football giants have potentially dethroned the greatest dynasty in the history of the National Football League. They have beaten the Titans two years in a row here in the Super Bowl. And Tennessee does not get the storybook ending. They always beat teams the second time around in the playoffs. That was not the case here with the Giants. Caleb Farley will not end his career off as a champion, while Denton Mahone will likely win his second Super Bowl MVP. I think the problem offensively was that we didn't run the ball enough. Elijah Bryant, 10 carries, 87 yards, and 4 touchdowns. He was phenomenal, but we didn't use him enough. The defense also was not good. We allowed 40 points. Caleb Farley had a lot of tackles in his last game. It's good to see him being active, but on the other hand, he probably allowed a lot of catches. Nonetheless, definitely an unfortunate way to end his career. It looks like he doesn't have any doubts about retirement. Caleb Farley's career is done, and with that, all of the original OG Titans from the day one roster are now gone. They have all retired. Caleb Farley, currently the highest scoring legacy corner, barely above his teammate Cardell Simpson. And Caleb Farley never really got that much worse. He's an 88 overall. Regression didn't really hit him. He probably could have played another two to three seasons at a starting caliber level at the bare minimum had he wanted to keep going. Caleb Farley was really good for us right off the bat. Six interceptions in the first two seasons each. He had 10 in season four, one of the best defensive seasons I've ever seen. And then even in the long-term semi, he was a really productive player. He only made the Pro Bowl three times, though, the same amount of times. He led the league in interceptions, finishing with just under 1,000 career tackles and 44 career picks, which is comfortably the active lead across the NFL. What a career here for Caleb Farley. He had an outstanding series with us here in the Titans franchise, and it's a little bit unfortunate because in real life, he's kind of going through the opposite trajectory within his career. He's obviously had the medical issues, which has kind of led his career to fall apart a little bit. He hasn't played well. He could kind of use a fresh start. Hint, hint. Let's take a look at the retirements here for the 2033 offseason. A couple former Titans, Musa Adi War, he had one really good season for us in the long-term sim. Jaquan Brisker, a couple of highly drafted players in the first draft of the series with Noshan Kimboyle and Jermaine Hicks. Traylon Burks, former Titan, is done. He got off to a great start here. And then once we drafted Scotty Piggins, things kind of fell apart. We let him go, but he had some good seasons in New Orleans. Roger McCreary is done. He was part of the Kyle Pitts trade. He had a solid career for a while. Lamar Jackson, Chris Olave, Justin Fields, damn near the whole Lions team. Derwin James, Amon Ross St. Brown, and TJ Hawkinson, all of whom are going to Canton. Brees Hall, Jonathan Taylor, Devontae Smith, Javante Williams, Patrick Sertan, Greg Newsom, Jamar Chase, Frank Ragnall, Aziz Ojolari, former Titan, Sekou Bateau above, former Titan as well. Those guys retired too. And that just about does it, along with, of course, Caleb Farley there at the bottom as well. Coming off a season where we were not in a good spot financially, I think we really are now. We've got around $60 million to spend, and we're going to have more flexibility coming. Romeo Colochi is making $73 million this year, but over the next two seasons, he's only going to make $76 million total. It is worth noting, though, he regressed quite a bit this offseason. He's still in 99, but he took some big hits. I'm a little bit surprised those hits came this quickly with him only being 31, which feels kind of young for a quarterback to really get hit that big. But with our $60 million here, we should be able to bring back a lot of these depth players. I really want Tavares Booker back, but I don't want him back on a long-term deal. 
He says no to my very player-friendly one-year deal, so we're going to tag him for less money. I don't know what his agent was really thinking there. We ended up bringing some other guys back as well. Roosevelt Bird and Quincy Bishop inside the middle of the defensive line. Yusuf Oluwolu, I think, had a pretty solid season. He'll be back. Colin McCain in the secondary will be back as well. And then depth running back Tyreek Williams returns for two more years. We've got a lot of money here entering this free agency. But before that, we're going to sign Jamie Wheatley. He's a good depth receiver. And now we're going to hop into free agency. We've got around $30 million to spend. And there are some good players. Jaden Wilson-Miller, George Charbonnet II, Melly Golden, Torian Wilson, Fred Warner, Patrick Mahomes, Shai Jones-Porter, Masaru Lee. There are some ballers in this free agency class. I'd love to get a big-time player on defense, particularly a big-time pass rusher. That's exactly what George Charbonnet II has been for the Cardinals over the last nine years. So it's really down to us in Cleveland, and unfortunately, he ended up signing with Cleveland. My backup plan is is to go after Melly Golden. He was the number one pick by the Texans a while back. He's been there for eight years. We're going to give him a two-year deal for close to $50 million. He would ultimately end up accepting that deal. He'll be the Caleb Farley replacement, hopefully for the next four or five years. We've got a fifth-year option here for one of our young players who we drafted in the first round, being Lamar Cloud, the corner. Similarly to what we've done, I'm going to say no, because I think an extension with him would be cheaper than the fifth year option as we look at free agency. Jaden Wilson Miller signs with Dallas. Obviously, as we know, the Browns got Charbonnet. Patrick Mahomes is a 49er. That's uh, that's something. Masaru Lee signs with the Seahawks. That's also quite interesting. And that'll bring us to a very pivotal draft because we have three first round picks, including the seventh overall pick from the Los Angeles Chargers. And I think we ended up having a really good draft. Our top pick was a little disappointing, although I do want to point out there's an 87 overall running back. I don't think I've ever seen an 87 before. Our top pick was Hugh Harrison. He's a 73 edge rusher with normal dev, so we kind of whiffed there. Our other two first-round picks did have hidden, though, with Alex Finnegan and then D'Angelo Walters. So I think our last two picks were a lot better. Isaiah McCutcheon in the second round, I think, is a pretty good pick. Lionel Klein and Luke Sherwood also have hidden development as well. So that'll bring us into the second season of the day. This is what the roster looks like. I think we're going to continue to see a lot of the older players retire within the next few seasons. No more real-life players are on the roster, and now it's going to be the guys who we drafted from the NCAA Next Up series who are next up to retire. We're 5-1 and one here at the trade deadline. We've got some guys who we need to pay. So we're going to get that done first. We've actually got a lot of guys we need to pay. That starts with Elijah Bryant, who's only 31. I think he's got quite a few years left. He is back. Francis Boa Kamoa re-ups for three years. I don't know how much longer Cardell Simpson has left in the tank, but we will re-sign him for another year. We're trying to work out a long-term deal with Tavares Booker. It's not really working out. We would bring back guard Eric Swinton on a five-year extension. Lamar Cloud is not back yet. He wants more years, even though we gave him five. Asher Gonzalez is back. Jerry Nickerson, the center, is back. So it's really just Booker and Cloud that we've got to work with with a little under $10 million. And I don't think at this point we're going to resign Tavares Booker because we've got a really good offensive line. So we're going to trade him for an early second from the Broncos as we finish the season 11-6, and six, good enough to win the division. We've got the 8-9 and nine Kansas City Chiefs looming in the wild card. They ended up being the number 7th seed, barely squeaking into the postseason. Romeo Colocci had another very strong year, 4,800 yards, 35 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Elijah Bryant on the ground was quite good. Scotty Piggins, more of the same from him. Hot Rod Pryor also going over 1,000 yards as well. And then defensively, Francis Boa Kamoa, 17 and a half sacks. That's a lot. As we take a look at some of the other numbers, I think Sterling Yorkershire is going to end up winning the MVP. That's really cool to see. Sterling Yorkershire was a guy who entering his senior year of college, he was literally a nobody. He was a backup. Then he gets the starting job. He leads TCU to the national title, and he's been a great quarterback for the Bucs over the last decade, and he's going to most likely win the MVP. Mookie Davis, the former Ohio State running back, ends up winning the rushing title. Jarvis Carlisle continues to own all of the receiving numbers, although Joshua Ridley on the Saints is really, really good as well. He ended up finishing second in most statistical categories receiving Scotty Pickens of course not too far behind those guys as well and then defensively Boa Kamoa third in sacks 
We had some guys pretty high up in interceptions as well. Yorkshire, as I expected, does end up winning the MVP. Romeo on the list in sixth. Scotty Pickens wins the AFC Offensive Player of the Year. D'Angelo Walters wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. That means he's going to go up in dev. While Boa Kamoa also takes home an award as well. We have another one last hurrah. I assume it's going to be Cardell Simpson. He's 34 years old, and it is. We have made it far enough to where the players we drafted are now retiring. 34 seems to be like the magic number. I think that seems to be the age that a lot of the better players seem to retire. This doesn't include quarterbacks. We saw it with Caleb Farley. We saw it with guys like Landry, Derrick Henry, Kevin Byard, and we lost! Oh no! We lose to the seven-seeded Chiefs, 49-35. The Patrick Mahomes-less Kansas City Chiefs, who now have Jaden Woods out of Jackson State at the quarterback position. This is the first time we have not won a playoff game since season one of the actual series. That's so long ago. So Cardell Simpson's career is done. Just like that, with 35 career interceptions and over 1,000 tackles. What a career, though, for Cardell Simpson. It sucks that it came to an end like that. Cardell Simpson has won a playoff game in every season of his career, dating back to his senior year of college with South Alabama. But he doesn't win one this year, and that is how he retires. I was hoping maybe he'd stick around, but no, he's done. He does pass Caleb Farley for the highest-scoring cornerback on the Legacy leaderboard with 21,550 points. What a career here for Cardell Simpson. We drafted him with the first pick in the second round at the very first draft, moving up to acquire him. Cardell Simpson's a really fun story because this was a guy who was not a highly regarded high school recruit. He chooses to go to South Alabama, and then his college production is just off the charts with 13 interceptions as a junior, 7 as a senior, leading the team to the national championship as the team captain. And then in this series, obviously the 2026 season really stands out with 12 interceptions. He also had 4 interceptions during that playoff run, including 2 in the Super Bowl. So that's 16 interceptions in one season. He had some very good uh, seasons in the long-term sim as well, finishing with 4 Pro Bowls, 2 best defensive backs, and of course, a Defensive Player of the Year. What a career here for Cardell Simpson. The dynamic duo of him and Caleb Farley was so fun. These two guys complemented each other so well, and now they'll get to complement each other's plaques in Canton, Ohio. We'll take a quick look at the Pro Bowl roster. We've got the Bengals and the Packers in Super Bowl 69. Nice. Romeo Colochi, Elijah Bryant, and Scotty Piggins headline the Pro Bowl team for the AFC. Danny Dorsey, former Titan. Babatunde Mamadou, former Titan. They both make it defensively. And sure enough, in the Super Bowl, the Packers would end up beating the Bengals. So unfortunately for me, as the Green Bay Packers hater, they end up taking Super Bowl 69 with Bruce Dobson, who they drafted in the first year of the long-term sim, winning the game's MVP. That'll bring us to the 2034 offseason. We know Cardell Simpson is retiring. Will anybody join him? Isaiah Simmons is here. Octavius Thatcher is here. Asher Gonzalez retires after 11 years. Our top pick in the second draft of the series, calls it a career. Very similarly with Cardell Simpson, Gonzalez was not a highly regarded player coming into his college career. He really was not on the radar of NFL teams up until his senior season, where he was one of the best defensive players in the country with San Diego State. Ends up being a first rounder here with the Titans, and he ended up being a jack of all trades. Swiss Army Knife is a linebacker who could do just about everything. He could cover, he could stop the run, he could blitz into the backfield going after the quarterback. I don't think he quite had a Hall of Fame career, but with a legacy score of over 17,000, he will make the Hall of Fame, which is really cool, even if he wasn't really a Hall of Fame player. Other names in here include Tyrese Barracon, Chase Young, Tyler Linderbaum, Aiden Hutchinson, Sauce Gardner, Kiki Rodriguez, Devin Banks, Drake London, former Titan, Carlisle Kaplan, Brody Kluby, Roman Horn, Justin Jefferson, Caden Reed, Tristan Wirfs, Luke Coghill, Kyler Murray... And then at the bottom, a plenty of other notable names as well. Super young guys from the Next Up series like Casey Aceron, who were freshmen when we started the Next Up series, are now retiring. That is crazy to think about. So now everybody who we drafted in the series is over 30 years old, over 31 to be specific, as we gear up for another offseason here. The 2034 offseason, we ended up clearing a lot of money with our retirements, and now we only have one guy to pay, that being Lamar Cloud. We are going to bring back some other depth players in Lamar Cloud. 
would ultimately agree to a six-year extension. I think he's only going to continue to get better. Alani Trainer probably is going to start now with Asher Gonzalez gone. We need him back. Ramir Conwell returns on a one-year deal as well. And so that'll bring us into free agency. And with Romeo Colochi making a lot less money, we've got plenty of money to spend. We do have to be smart, though, because we're going to have to pay Romeo at some point soon. But we have $50 million to spend, and Nick Bosa is available. The Super Bowl MVP winning quarterback Bruce Dobson is also available. Not that we're hunting for a quarterback. But Nick Bosa, who is far and away... The NFL's all-time sack leader leaves the Niners. I would love to add him to the defense. Two years, $60 million. Sign me up. We're also going to offer Leonidas Mitchell and Jamario McCullers. All three players would end up accepting as we've got a fifth-year option for Rashad Pleasant. I ended up declining it because, again, I thought an extension would be cheaper than the fifth-year option. Spoiler alert, I ended up being wrong. Josh Farrell, remember him? He was the quarterback we drafted in the first round because of really good value. We are going to accept the fifth-year option, the reason being that we can trade him in the following offseason with no penalty. So, of course, as I mentioned, Nick Bosa accepts along with the other guys. Bruce Dobson signs with the Chargers. I don't know why Green Bay let him go, but he will replace Justin Herbert as the starter in L.A. I don't know why the Chargers are just removing themselves of Justin Herbert, but okay, you do you, I guess, Chargers. That'll bring us to another NFL draft here in the offseason of 2035. The Lions drafted a quarterback second overall, which is a little bit of a surprise. Clyde Williamson is 36 years old, but I was kind of caught off guard by that. Our top pick was Freddie Cosby, hopefully no relations to Bill, a safety out of Michigan. He had hidden development. He looks pretty solid. We also got a pretty decent receiver with hidden development at the top of the second round with Lynch. So here's a look at the lineup. No more Cardell Simpson or Asher Gonzalez defensively. The defense does not have many players left, while the offense still has a lot of guys. We're three and four at the deadline, which is not good. What is good is that Hot Rod Pryor is back. And what's also good is that we end up going 10 and seven, grabbing a playoff spot as we are the sixth seed, grabbing a wild card spot, facing off against the Bengals. As we take a look at the stats for the year, Romeo Colochi threw for 5,000 yards and only five interceptions. Even though the touchdowns are low, that looks really good. Elijah Bryant got all the scores. He got in the end zone 21 times. Scotty Pickens was great again. I want to talk about Scotty Pickens in particular in just a minute because he's going to be record chasing. Speaking of records, Nick Bosa, 19 sacks. He is 261 in his career, which is 56 points higher than second place. Here's a look at some of the top statistical leaders at the quarterback position. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes there with the Niners. That's kind of weird. Justin Tucker is now the starter with the Jets after being a backup for like five years. He's had a very weird career arc in this series. As for the receivers, Scotty Piggins, of course, high up here once again for a 13th consecutive season with over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. Nick Bosa at 37 years old leads the league in sacks with Baba Tunde Mamadou finishing in second. Patrick Mahomes at like 40 years old with the Niners ends up winning the MVP. Nick Bosa wins Depoy, Elijah Bryant, and Bosa both take home awards. So we've got another one last hurrah storyline. I'm really hoping it's not Scotty Pickens because I genuinely believe he's got a real shot to break some records. He's only 34 years old, which again seemed to be the magic number with age in this game. But with 18,000 yards and 174 touchdowns, he's probably a season and a half away from being second in yards. And I think he's two seasons away from breaking Jerry Rice's all-time touchdown record. He has not missed a beat, but he seems to be comfortable with retiring at the age of 34, despite the fact that he has played so dominantly for 13 years and has not lost a step at all. So this appears to be the end of the road here for Scotty Pickens here in the playoffs, which does suck. I really hope he ends up changing his mind because, well, the guy is really good. So we've got a wild card game here against the Bengals, and we would end up allowing 52 points. Spoiler alert, we did not score more than 52. We end up losing by 30. Joe Burrow, still here in Cincinnati, scores four touchdowns. And that's how Scotty Pickens' career likely comes to a close. Certainly an unfortunate way to end it. We'll see if he actually does plan on retiring. Again, I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that he changes his mind, but it looks like his mind is made up. Scotty Piggins very well could have broken some receiving records, but he's going to retire still on the top of his game, which is still a baller move as well. Scotty Piggins is second amongst receivers all-time in legacy score. He's also second amongst players on our roster 
in legacy score, only behind Romeo Colocci. What a career here for Scotty Piggins, the number one draft pick of the entire series. The second he stepped onto the field, he was phenomenal, and he did not stop. Over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns in all 13 seasons of his career here in the National Football League. Some seasons in particular were very impressive. I mean, the career numbers speak for themselves. This is one of the greatest receivers to ever play the game. If he had played longer, he could have broken Jerry Rice's records. It's just that he did not have the longevity that Jerry Rice did. Not because he got worse, but simply because he just wants to retire. And you can't honestly blame him. He's getting older, his body's breaking down. Maybe he's got kids that he wants to spend time with. I don't know. But if he had played another three seasons, I think he could have become the NFL's all-time leading receiver in a lot of statistical categories. And I think he has another three years left in the tank. But he just doesn't want to, which is fair. So that'll bring us to the Pro Bowl. Scotty Piggins does not make the roster. I think it's only because he retired. <laughs> He's just like so checked out. He doesn't care about making the Pro Bowl. He was certainly good enough. Elijah Bryant and Nick Bosa headline the list amongst Titans who end up making the Pro Bowl roster this season. And then in the Super Bowl, the Packers make it back with a rookie quarterback they drafted. They end up losing to the Raiders, who are, of course, led by Josh Allen, who's almost 40 years old. Josh Allen finally wins a Super Bowl. He never did it with the Bills. Then with the Raiders, he finally gets one. As we take a look at the retirements, Joshua Calico, Zyrus Opoko, Kanan Dean. Remember, he was the two-way player. He was a basketball player at the University of Alabama. Kenneth Scott. Nick Bosa is done after 17 years. 16 with the Niners, one with us. Melvin Chason retires. We're now having players drafted during the long-term sim retiring. Josh Allen retires as a champion. Kobe Bryant and Bryson Smith, two phenomenal players, both spent their entire careers with New England. They were both really, really good. Probably both Hall of Famers. Penny Sewell, Buck Ratliff, Trayvon Walker, Sayonara, Boo Boo Drame, Moses Munoz, Jamison Williams, Micah Parsons, Alex Weldy, Seattle Jackson, Udo Afolabe, Magnus Zimmerman, Jordan Ruffin, former Titan, CJ Thomas Jr., and that just about does it. A lot of players here in 2035 who we know from the Next Up series and from real life are retiring. That'll bring us to another offseason. We've got a lot of money cleared up with Scotty Piggins' deal off the books. He was making a whole lot of green. We've got around $100 million to spend. Unfortunately, our top two guys, Melly Golden and Rashad Pleasant, both said no. With Rashad Pleasant being a younger guy, we ended up prioritizing the franchise tag on him, meaning that Melly Gold in the corner is going to hit the open market. We're going to hopefully bring him back because I still think he's got quite a few years left in the tank. And he ends up being the highest rated player in what is a very weak free agency class with not a whole lot of names I recognize. We've got some of the offensive linemen. Kobe Henderson was in there, but not a lot of names we know. We're going to offer Melly Golden a two-year deal. He would end up saying yes, and we're going to give Mark Rousseau the fifth-year option. He is really good. That's probably been my best draft pick of the entire long-term sim. Here's a look at free agency. Justin Herbert signs with the Lions as the new backup for Clyde Williamson. As for our draft, we got a pretty good defensive tackle at the top. We also got a good quarterback, Willie Matthews, in the fourth round. He looks like a pretty good player, 70 overall. So that'll bring us into the next season. As I've said, 34 years old seems to be the magic number with age. R.J. Robinson and Athanase Gothero are 34. Romeo Colocci and Elijah Bryant are 33. I think Romeo's got more time left because he is a quarterback. And for what it's worth, he is by far the best quarterback in the league. The highest drafted quarterback from the series who is next on the list is only an 85 overall. So all the guys that we've seen throughout the series are really regressing, while Romeo is still really good as a 99 overall. I assume he won't be a 99 for much longer, being that he's 33. But the fact that he's so much better than all of the other quarterbacks drafted in the series is impressive. What's not impressive is that we're in last place in the division. We're 2-4, and four, and it's time to give Romeo a new deal. His seven-year, 400 and however many million dollar deal is up. He says no to our initial contract. We would re-sign Rashad Pleasant, though, along with Hassan Drame. Landry Kennison also accepts as well. And we ended up really rebounding, going 10-7, and seven, grabbing the seventh seed with the Houston Texans looming in the first round of the postseason. Romeo Colocci had a pretty solid season as he is not currently under contract next year. We've got to make sure that's in order. No Scotty Pickens, so Hot Rod Pryor and Isaiah McCutcheon led the way receiving-wise. Mark Russo with 10 sacks. Melly Golden leads the NFL with eight interceptions. We've got another one last hurrah, and it's unsurprisingly R.J. Robinson 
again, 34 years old seems to be the magic number. RJ Robinson is 34 years old. So I assume this is going to be it for him. Hopefully, unlike the last few guys, we can at least win him a couple playoff games. We've got the Texans up here and we would end up losing. The defense lets us down again, 41 to 17. Our Titans might have lost like four playoff games going into today's episode. We've now lost four playoff games in a row. That's not good. We have not won a playoff game in three consecutive years. What has happened? If the dynasty was not already dead, I hate to say it, but we have not won a Super Bowl in half a decade. It might be dead, kids. So RJ Robinson's career ends off with a wild card loss, just like how Scotty Pickens and Cardell Simpson's careers end up, as RJ Robinson will officially be retiring. A great career here for RJ. I think he was one of the most underrated players that we had in this series. He was just as good as some of the other guys, and I feel like we didn't give him enough credit. So we're going to give him his flowers now, because he was a really awesome player. We drafted RJ Robinson in the second draft of the series, in the second round out of Virginia Tech. He was a very talented linebacker who was a little bit raw, didn't play as a rookie, but once he played, he was really good. Him and Asher Gonzalez were a very fun duo, although RJ Robinson was always the better player, even though Asher Gonzalez was drafted a whole round earlier. RJ Robinson was always better. His legacy score is a little bit higher than Asher, and thus he ends up making the Hall of Fame as the Texans end up making it all the way to the Super Bowl. They'll face off against like 40-year-old Patrick Mahomes and the 49ers. We did not have many guys end up making the Pro Bowl. Still plenty of recognizable names, but there are less and less as a lot of the guys from the next up series retire. The ones who are still in the league are pretty much actively regressing here and getting older. And sure enough, the Niners end up winning the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes never won a second championship until now. The Chiefs were consistently good for a decade, but we just kept beating them in the playoffs. So they never made the Super Bowl during the entire series. And remember, Mahomes never got the second ring originally because he never played against the Eagles in Super Bowl 57 here. So he finally wins another championship as we hop into the offseason. And there's a long list of Titans retiring. Ramir Conwell, Hot Rod Pryor, Athanase Gothero, and Quinn Crew are all done. A large chunk of the guys we had left in the series have called it a career, along with RJ Robinson as well, who retired after the playoff game. We've got a lot of guys to go over here. I think we've got to start with the two receivers, Hot Rod Pryor and Quinn Crew. These guys are sort of connected by the hip. They were drafted in the same draft class, the second draft of the series, 2024. They were both late day three picks. Quinn Crew was drafted in the sixth round. Hot Rod Pryor was drafted in the seventh round. That was a really deep receiver class, and thus both players had pretty big roles early on. Neither of them were full-time starters until we let Garrett Wilson go, and they both ended up having really good careers. Hot Rod Pryor in specifically, who's coming off one of the best seasons of his career, never made a Pro Bowl, but he had like five or 6,000 yard receiving seasons. I think he finished with over 10K yards. And then Quinn Crew as well was a really good player. I think Hot Rod Pryor was a little bit better, but Quinn Crew was also really good. He had a couple thousand yard seasons of his own. He had a couple seasons where he was really close as well. Him and Hot Rod Pryor are both very solid players, and I find it kind of fitting that they're retiring together because I always sort of associated the two of them with each other. I thought I'd say Gothero also retires. We did not have him during the actual series. He was a very high pick at the Raiders, drafted in the top 10 out of Ball State. We ended up trading for him in the very first season of a long-term sim, and he ended up being pretty solid as the replacement for Kevin Byard. Ramir Conwell also retires. He ended up going 5-1 in the Super Bowl. Accidentally did not have him on the roster for one of our Super Bowl losses, so he has one less Super Bowl loss. Good for him. He was a really good special teamer. That was really the name of his game. Very good kick returner. Of course, we remember the game against Jacksonville in the final full season where he had two kick returns in the same quarter. Jarvis Carlisle retires, one of the best receivers ever, really. Jamison Anderson retires, Elijah Fox, Shea Jones-Porter, Gabe Feldstead, Racer Fox, Patrick Mahomes after 20 seasons, just like Josh Allen, he retires as a Super Bowl champion. Evan Smith, Giacomo Vivaro, Kramer Gilderford, Marcus Bowling, Abijah Travers, Jeremiah owusu Goramala, Josh Parks, former Titan, Ebenezer Rosen, Yusuf Oluwolu, Nigel Deacon, Marco Prince, and a bunch of other recognizable names. So that'll bring us now to the next offseason. We don't have many guys left. 
Jeffrey Walker, Romeo Colocci, Elijah Bryant, Francis Boa Kamoa, and Hassan Drame are the only players left from our original Super Bowl team. Again, 34 seems to be the magic number. I think that's when Elijah Bryant and Francis Boa Kamoa probably retire. Hassan Drame has probably only got a couple years left. So I think in two seasons, it'll really just be Romeo Colocci and maybe Jeffrey Walker. Romeo Colocci will have to sign the franchise tag. He does not yet agree to an extension. We would sign Eli Bayless in free agency. With Scotty, Crew, and, and Pryor all gone, we need new receivers, like, really badly. So that'll bring us to the NFL draft. We got a good safety, Chad Brown, in the first round. We got a nice receiver, Stephen Stewart, in the second round. Stephen Stewart, I think, might be the first player who we drafted in the long-term sim who has superstar development. We've had a bunch of guys go up in development during the long-term sim, but I don't think I've drafted anybody higher than Stardev until him. So that'll bring us into the next season. The receiving core looks a whole lot different. Only a few guys left. From that Season 5 championship team, just five players remain. We're 4-3 and three here at the midseason mark. We've got to re-sign Romeo Colocci, of course. Elijah Bryant is here as well, along with a number of other players. Romeo accepts a three-year extension. Elijah Bryant returns. Mark Russo returns for five years. Melly Golden and Elton George would both say no, though. But we do re-sign D'Angelo Walters and Isaiah McCutcheon. Francis Bola Kamoa is also back. As we end up missing the playoffs, 7-10, and 10, the first season of the entire series that we go under 500, and the first season since season 1 that we missed the playoffs. I think a big reason why we kind of stumbled at the end of the year was Elijah Bryant getting injured. He was playing really well, and the backup running backs were really bad. You know who wasn't bad? This new receiving tandem of Isaiah McCutcheon and Eli Bayless. They were both really, really good. The defense was pretty bleh, though, unfortunately. The Giants ended up beating the Chargers in the Super Bowl. So the Giants win a third championship. They're 3-0 in Super Bowls in this series. They obviously beat us twice. Denton Mahone is now a three-time champion as he tries to catch up to Romeo Colocci. Jorgensen Jupiter, the former Oklahoma State quarterback, by the way, has won back-to-back -back MVPs. I think that's pretty cool. That'll bring us into another group of retirements. We've got another big list, including Francis Boa Kamoa and Elijah Bryant, who are both done. Both guys are 34 years old. I anticipated this happening, and sure enough, my intuition proves to be correct. So we'll reflect on both of these careers. We'll start with Boa. I feel like that would have been a really good nickname. I wish I called him that before right now, but oh well. You live and learn, I guess. Boa Kamoa had a really nice stretch during the long-term sim, capped off by a 17 and a half sack season. And he ended up having a really good career, but obviously the big name here is Elijah Bryant, who finishes his career with nearly 20,000 scrimmage yards and exactly 200 scrimmage touchdowns. Elijah Bryant had a really interesting role early on because he was the backup for Derrick Henry his first five seasons, and we kind of had to get creative. When we drafted him, we knew he was not going to be the lead runner, but we also knew this guy was too talented to not have on the field. So because of that, we made him the change of pace running back, gave him around 10 carries a game. We used him a lot as a receiver, particularly the three seasons of the actual series where he caught at least 57 passes and was a very, very good pass-catching option. Once he became the full-time starter running back, he was really good. Eight seasons of over 1,000 yards and double-digit touchdowns. This last one, he didn't because he got injured. Otherwise, he would have. Elijah Bryant had a great career coming out of the University of Florida as a high second-round pick in a loaded running back class with, of course, Brody Kluby and likely future Hall of Famer Dior Antoine. And it's kind of cool that all three of those players ended up staying with their same teams through their entire careers. Mookie Davis, Latrell McAllister, Josiah Wake, Micah Parsons, Dior Antoine, we just mentioned him, Kyrie's Tellington, Jaden Wilson-Miller, Jameer Jefferson, George Charbonnet II, headline the list of retirements here in the year of 2037. Pretty much all of the real players, other than like Joe Burrow and maybe a couple others, are all gone at this point. Romeo Colocci is officially no longer a 99 overall. Jeffrey Walker, by the way, isn't even on the roster. So it's just Romeo Colocci and Hassan Drame as the final two soldiers. With Drame being 34 and him not being all that good anymore, I expect this to be his last year. So it really comes down to Romeo Colocci. I'm going to turn all the settings on auto. We're going to go through the seasons a lot faster. The team has not been producing as of recent. So we're going to move quickly here as the Buccaneers win the next Super Bowl. Sterling Yorkshire 
Burrow wins Super Bowl MVP, while Joe Burrow, at like 40 years old, wins an MVP for the Saints. So a little fun fact here with Sterling Yorkshire winning the Super Bowl for the Bucs. Yorkshire is the first quarterback from the NCAA Next Up series, other than Romeo Colocci, to start and win a Super Bowl. You would have thought it would have happened before 2038, but he is the first one because Romeo Colucci and the Giants have stolen all the championships. Here's a look at the retirements. Danny Dorsey, former Titan, Jalen Douglas, Santo Irving, Tyon Christopher, Clyde Williamson retires after 16 seasons and no championship with Detroit. He was, of course, the very first player drafted in this series, won a national championship in the first NCAA Next Up season. The man who replaced him at Georgia, Aram Kachakan, also retires. He spent most of his career at Carolina, finished it out with a year in Jacksonville. Gilbert Smith, second all-time in sacks behind Nick Bosa. He retires. Steve Stifler, Justice Everdeed, and others down the board retire. There's Jeffrey Walker. Hassan Drame was up there as well. I didn't even mention him, but Hassan Drame is done. And with that, we are officially down to one. The clock has been put on to Romeo Colocci at 36 years old. He's the last man standing. There's only a few quarterbacks left from the Next Up series and 42-year-old Joe Burrow. The Saints ended up winning the Super Bowl the following season with Jorgensen Jupiter winning the Super Bowl MVP. Jorgensen Jupiter is now the second quarterback from the Next Up series to win a Super Bowl. He has had like a weird career arc. He started as a backup with the Ravens, then joins the Saints. His last four seasons have been especially weird. MVP, MVP back up to the MVP and then wins the Super Bowl. <laughs> what a four-year stretch for Jorgensen Jupiter. This year he finished second for the MVP with Romeo coming in third. Romeo had his best season in a while, so he unsurprisingly does not retire. Bartholomew Blunt does retire as a Texan after all those years with the Colts. Melly Golden retires. Trayon Scott retires. Isaiah Gordon spent his entire career with the Rams. Tyrese Kalen, Joe Burrow after 17 seasons in Cincinnati, bounced around a little bit after that with Jacksonville, won an MVP with New Orleans, and then back in Jacksonville, finishing with just under 100,000 passing yards and 800 passing touchdowns, both all-time NFL records. Those are some insane numbers. That's pretty much 5,000 yards and 40 touchdowns a year. Sterling Yorkshire retires. He finally got that championship. Good for him. Carleek Garlandshire retires, Masaru Lee, Kenny Nanababatata, Trevor Lawrence is done, Utavis Kojiemi, and that's about it here for 2039. Into 2040, the Giants beat the Raiders. That's ring number four for Denton Mahone. He's now 4-0 in Super Bowls. He's one away from tying Romeo Colucci, and I kind of hope he doesn't get it. Here's a look at the 2040 retirements. Jorgensen Jupiter retires with two MVPs and a ring. What a way to end his career. Not many names I recognize here, though. Jorgensen Jupiter is just about the only one. There's Baba Tunde Mamadou. He retires. Hamza Hamalari, we know that name, former UNC tight end. Akin Fenwin retires, and that's it. Those are literally the only names I recognize. Everybody else here is auto-generated players. So we're here in 2041. I just want to kind of reflect on something real quick. Romeo Colocci is the only super highly rated player left from the Next Up series, and he's the only quarterback left. He's also one of the fastest. Romeo Colucci is far and away the all-time passing leader. Here are some of the other leaders, which include Garrett Wilson. Other than Romeo Colucci, the only player left from the actual series is Garrett Wilson, who has not played in four years. He's a 55 overall. He's basically the Udonis Haslam of the NFL. The New York Giants end up winning another Super Bowl. They beat the Tennessee Titans. Denton Mahone is now 5-0 in Super Bowls. He ties Romeo Colucci in rings, and keep in mind, he beat Romeo twice in the big game. As we look at the retirements, Richard Costanzo is done. That's literally, like, pretty much the only name I know here. Other than that, these are all autogen players, not even from the Next Up series, and no Romeo Colucci. That'll bring us to 2042. The Steelers with Walt Oliver end up beating the Saints in the Super Bowl. And that'll bring us into retirements. Is this the year our boy Romeo finally retires? Yes, it is. Romeo has retired. Romeo Hannon, that is. Not Romeo Colucci. He's going to stick it out for another year. Joshua Ridley is done after 12 years. Joshua Ridley was basically Scotty Piggins, but like on steroids. He was even better than Scotty, as crazy as that is. That'll bring us into 2043. The Minnesota Vikings finally win a Super Bowl. They've been in the NFL for pretty much the entire Super Bowl era. It's been 78 years, and they finally get the job done with Travis Calcutta winning the game's MVP. So as you'll notice here, I accidentally made a major oopsies. 
Uh, Romeo Colochi is on the Bills. I have a lot of explaining to do. So, I assumed that we had Romeo Colochi still under contract. Apparently, he wasn't. He ended up playing for the Bills. And the annoying thing is this is when he retires. Romeo Colochi has retired as a member of the Buffalo Bills. I don't believe it. But yes, after 19 seasons, 18 with the Titans, and one with the Bills, Romeo Colochi's career is done. So we have to reflect about his career in a Bills jersey. Yuck. But what a career for Romeo. His first season doesn't show up here because he's played so much. But he ended up winning two MVPs, five Super Bowls, seven AFC championships. Romeo was so good through the first 10 years of his career. He wasn't really the same after that, and the team never really was either. After the first season today, we won two playoff games through the rest of the entire episode. But still, that doesn't take away from what Romeo did. He finishes third all-time in passing yards, third all-time in passing touchdowns. Of the NCAA Next Up players who were drafted into this series, nobody has a higher career legacy score than the now Hall of Famer, Romeo Colochi, who finishes third all-time on the leaderboard, only behind Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow. Let's go through all of our Hall of Famers, obviously starting with Romeo Colochi, QB1, the face of the franchise, five Super Bowls, what a career for Romeo, but he's not the only one. There's a lot of fellow Titans in Canton. Romeo's wide receiver one, Mr. Consistent, and in my opinion, the best overall football player in this series, Scotty Pickens, big Derrick Henry, the king. Richard Costanzo ended up being fourth on the team. That kind of surprised me. Cardell Simpson and Caleb Farley, the ball-hawking cornerback duo. R.J. Robinson, the unsung hero of the defense. Amani Ward, a very talented, young, versatile safety who ended up winning another Super Bowl with the Raiders. Harold Landry, a very talented pass rusher who was phenomenal in playoff games. Elijah Bryant, the versatile do-it-all running back. Asher Gonzalez, the jack-of-all-trades linebacker. Ed Oliver, the big disruptive pass rusher in the middle of the defensive line. Kevin Byard, the veteran ball hawking safety, along with his replacement, Athanase Gothero, who was almost just as good. We've got 172 players who were added to the Hall of Fame during just this series alone, and there's going to be more, including, hopefully, head coach Zebediah Phoenix. That just speaks to the amount of talent we've had in this series, and if you look at all the quarterbacks, so many guys made the Hall of Fame from the NCAA Next Up series. Obviously, you got Romeo, Clyde Williamson from Georgia, Aaron Kachikan, his fellow Georgia teammate, Jorgensen Jupiter. You've got the kid from TCU, Sterling Yorkershire, Kareem Kamara, Isaiah Gordon, and then you get to some guys who didn't really deserve it. Masaru Lee and Bartholomew Blunt were both high picks. They both had strong careers. I don't know if they were Hall of Famers. And then Kate Hutchinson makes the Hall of Fame. This one's kind of funny to me. Going into the NCAA Next Up series, Kate Hutchinson was the face of college football. He was this next generational quarterback prospect, and he looked the part at Clemson, winning a Heisman, leading them to the national championship before becoming the number one overall pick by the Minnesota Vikings. He was not a bust by any means. He did not have a bad NFL career, but him going to the Hall of Fame is basically like Jared Goff staying at his current level for the next like six or seven years and him making the Hall of Fame. He Cade does not belong in the Hall of Fame, but he was still a good player for sure. As we look at some of the other next up players who were in the Hall of Fame, the second highest legacy leaderboard player is Gilbert Smith, the legendary Giants pass rusher, another Oklahoma Sooner. Those Oklahoma teams were loaded. Scotty Pickens ended up finishing in third, and after him we had a lot of the quarterbacks. After those guys, the next player was George Charbonnet II, the pass rusher from Idaho. There's Kyle Pitts. I didn't even mention him with the other Titans Hall of Famers. Bryson Smith and Tyrese Kalen, legendary pass catchers with the New England Patriots. Palatunde Mamadou and Josiah Wake, the Texas pass rushing duo. Malachi James, Hamza Hamilari, and Gunnar Wilson, some very talented tight ends. Octavius Thatcher, another Oklahoma Sooner. There's Cardell Simpson, of course, Masaru Lee. Zyrus Okpoko, very high draft pick. D.R. Antoine, one of my favorite players from the Next Up series. The ultra-talented Rutgers running back. There's Amani Ward, Abijah Travers, the linebacker from UTSA, Josh Cook, Giga Maggies, Marcus Bowling, the USC pass rusher, Raphael Cunningham, Roman Horn, Caden Reed, he was an undrafted player out of Duke. He ends up making the Hall of Fame. Elijah Bryant, of course. Laquez Copeland, that's a really random one. I would not have guessed that before the beginning of his NFL career, but good for him. Kate Hutchinson and Latrell McAllister, the Clemson duo. Giacomo Vivaro, the legendary Florida linebacker. Obviously, we saw Asher Gonzalez in there. 
And we've got a few more here towards the bottom. Athanase Gothero, longtime Tennessee Titan. Deaden Washington, the legendary Texas receiver. How are those Texas teams so bad? They had so many good players. And there's Santo Irving, another former Texas Longhorn. Those are all the Hall of Famers from the NCAA Next Up series. There was a lot of them. And we still have one real player left in the NFL. Garrett Wilson is still with the Eagles. I think he's in his 50s at this point. I might be wrong, but he, he's an old man. So that is going to wrap up the series. What a journey it has been here with the Tennessee Titans and with the NCAA Next Up Dynasty. I really enjoyed having these two series link up together. It was really fun following these players' careers from the start of their college days to now entering the NFL Hall of Fame. We've seen these guys' entire football careers go by and it was really enjoyable to really build up storylines with this team and this series ended up being a lot of fun i'm super excited for what we've got planned in madden 24 because it's unlike you have ever seen on the youtube platform so that's going to be a lot of fun but nonetheless this was a really fun series here with the tennessee titans all the legendary players and storylines we've had i really enjoyed this team Romeo Colochi, Elijah Bryant, Scotty Piggins, Cardell Simpson, all of these guys from the NCAA Next Up series to here are certainly going to bring back some great memories as time goes along. And that'll wrap it up here, the final episode of the Tennessee Titans franchise here on Madden 23. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out. And for the final time, Titan up!